All right, I'm here with Ben Tate, the creator of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Scratch Edition. Congratulations, Ben. I've uh, really been enjoying playing your game. Thanks. So, um, so Ben, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you uh, came to be making games for Chromeworks. Um, so, I'm Ben, obviously. Um, I just turned 16 a few months ago. Um, I go to Sir Robert Bourne High School, and I'm in grade 11, soon to be grade 12 now. Um, and I did the co-op program. I was doing it online. So I was doing the co-op program last semester, and then I decided to keep on volunteering for the summer. Nice. Uh, what drew you to co-op? Um, well, I kind of know what I want to do when I'm older, um, something along the lines of engineering, something like that. So co-op was just a chance for me to uh, give it a shot, see what it was actually like in the workplace. Yeah, so Ben has been doing some tremendous work here. He's been making uh, tutorial videos, and uh, he's produced a really great series for us called Time Traveler, which most of my viewers will probably have seen, where we're going into the history of consoles. So I guess uh, you have a great attachment to consoles, Ben. Uh, tell us about how this game came to be and, uh, and what inspired you. So there are a few things. One, it, it's, it's Smash Bros. So I used to always play it as a kid. In fact, one of the, the episodes that I did in Time Travelers was on the Wii, and the Wii, I kind of talked about it a little bit. I used to always play with my sisters on the Wii, playing Smash Bros, things like that. And then when the newer one came out too, um, I played that a lot one too. That was really fun. And then another thing that inspired me to make the game was my first ever Scratch project was this like stick fighter game. I don't know, maybe it'll show footage. Uh, it was really, really bad. Um, so having another crack at that was definitely fun. Right, so just getting into, so you started off exploring kind of combat games and you just didn't know a lot about it. So um, I guess you learned quite a bit of Scratch uh, while you were putting this project together. Tell me about um, some of the difficulties you had along the way. What kind of things challenged you? Uh, difficulties? Well, one, I, I'd never built anything on this scale before. So you know, all the way down to like resourcing the sprites, getting things like that. I had never done anything kind of like that before. So I had to learn how to go find all the sprites. I had to go and do some Photoshopping, getting all the other little bits and bobs done with the menu screen, all things like that. So that was definitely time consuming, getting all of that ready. Um, in terms of coding, there was parts that were a little harder. There was one problem I knew I was always going to run into. That was being having the one and two players and player one always using WSD and then player two always using the arrow keys. So that was a problem I knew I was always, always going to have. Um, right. I ended up fixing it thanks to Jeffrey. Yeah, sorry. So my son Jeffrey helped you out with the uh, with the coding quite a bit, and um, and that was a good learning experience for you. So getting back to what you were just talking about, um, so yeah, the challenge when you're playing a two player game is how to um, make sure that that one player is actually assigned to player one. You're both playing an identical version of the game, right? So um, and yet one of you is playing in one role and the other one's playing in the other role. I guess you did that with variables, right? When you clicked on player one, um, you you uh, you set a, so every all the code for all the players all had to be inside a conditional statement, basically the if statement. Yeah. So yeah, so that if you clicked on player one, then only this bit of the code would be viable, right? So uh, in a lot of cases, I guess you coded everything twice. Once if I'm the main player, and once if I'm player two. Is that the way it happened? Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly. I think it's probably the easiest way to do it. It's pretty much just Control C, Control V, and a, a if loop. So I guess that it worked probably the best. But if it had been more players, it would have gone really, really complicated. Yeah, I can see that for sure. Yeah. Um, anything else about coding that you learned while you were making this project? Um, <laughs> funny enough, uh, because I never, I don't, I haven't really used Scratch too much. I didn't know how to use things like lists, so I'd never actually used them before. Um, I'd use them, of course, in like Java, C++, other languages, because they're just like arrays and things like that. So I'd never actually used them before, so I actually got to try them out when I was doing the death effects, which was right. pretty fun to do. So tell um, us how lists are involved in the death effect, just kind of briefly. Um, so I had to find a way to get the death effect to go to the character whenever they died, except because like each player doesn't actually they do know what player they are, they do know if they're player one or player two, but it's really confusing. Uh, not Other sprites don't really know if they're player one or player two. So I have to find a way in order to get... This is really, <laughs> sounds really confusing. I have to find a way for the death effect to know where to go and to know which player to go if they're player one or player two. So I ended up creating a list. And in the list, it was just Link, uh, Kirby, Pikachu. It was all, all the names of the characters. 
and then I can just use the player select so which person they want to go to and then correspond that to the position in the array so that I can go to that character. It's, okay. It's, it's weird. Yeah. Anyway, so um, the, yeah, the, every time I start a new project, I find I learn something a little bit new about how to do stuff a little more efficiently in Scratch. So I'm uh, glad this has been a good learning experience for you. Uh, what about the game are you most proud of, Ben? Um, probably the fact that I think it kind of looks like the real Smash Bros. So trying to get all the menu screen looking how like I always remember it, things like that. I'm pretty proud of how that ended up turning out. Yeah, it ends up ended up looking quite authentic. Actually, I was very impressed. Uh, ben flipped a scene from uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Scratch Edition into his latest Time Traveler video, where he tried to pass it off as the original game. And I must admit that I was actually fooled for a second, Ben. Um, anyway, so very impressive. Nice work. Um, anything you wish you could put into the game that you didn't get a chance to? Um, maybe just more characters. So adding in more characters, more arenas. Maybe not even Smash Bros. characters, like other random other characters that you can add in. Um, right. If I had more time, I'd definitely do that. Yeah, so uh, we've been talking about this a little bit off screen, and um, I think we're going to, after we finish this three part tutorial series, we're going to do a little added um, bonus lesson on how to add your own new characters and backgrounds to this game. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing that from you, Ben. Yes, that'll be fun. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for joining me today, Ben. Uh, congratulations on a fantastic project. Uh, several people on the Scratch forums have already told me that your project is POG, which I take it is, means it's very good. <laughs> so uh, congratulations. I think this is going to get big views. So, um, so I, I look forward to having lots and lots of kids play it. Uh, congratulations again, and, um, and thanks a lot. Thanks.